what's up guys we're here welcome back to the channel today we are going with our much much updated and super exciting build for blizzard this is our frieza final form 100 percent build variant of blizzard okay uh, we got starless skies last night on 100 durio runs we finished with four uber uniques that includes our shaco on Darius and uh, Starless Skies, as well as um, Melted Heart, which we have in our stash. But we finally got Starless Skies because I've been wanting to get this not only to test on Blizzard, but to test on Meteor as well. So we'll have a build, an updated build coming for Meteors as well. This is my variant. I really, really do enjoy it. I think it is very, very strong, incredibly strong. And this is by far going to be one of the best Blizzard builds for the season. So, yes, here we go. Let's get into the skills. I'm going to break all this down. We got Firebolt. Again, we're going Firebolt into our Enhancement skill, okay? It's going to be our first one. Everything is going to be Burning. This is what's going to make the build really, really good. Having access to Burning is going to make the build absolutely insane. Now, I do want to show some quick footage here later and just show you guys how good the build does against um, Ubers and Duriel and Lilith because people got uh, asked me about that. So I'm going to showcase those clips after um, we go through the guide. That way we can do a T100 and just show you how good the build is. So we got Firebolt going down into Frozen Orb, okay? Into Greater Frozen Orb. This is one of two ways that we are going to make enemies vulnerable. It is also going to be our second enchantment slot, okay? Every time we cast a non-basic, we get a chance to have Frozen Orb be thrown and it makes enemies vulnerable, which is great. So after Frozen Orb, we're taking one point into Potent Warding. This is just for some um, extra all res. Then we're going to come down and we're going to take Flame Shield into uh, Mythical Flame Shield just for mana cost reduction. However, now that we have um, Starless Skies, we can actually swap this to Shimmering just for more heal if you feel like it. Otherwise, just to keep this down and be able to spam, 25% extra is pretty good on a skill that costs uh, normally 35 and it's down to 25. So it actually costs less than that because this does not factor in Starless Skies. Then we got Teleport into Shimmering for more DR. We got one into Elemental Attunement for Lucky Hit uh, to reset a defensive skill. We got three into Glass Cannon for more damage. We got one point into Ice Armor as well as Enhanced Ice Armor because we do need Barrier in this build. This is very important. And a little bit of Mana Regen. However, you probably don't actually need the Mana Regen after the resource cost reduction. But um, if you like this, this is fun. Otherwise, I take this out and just try to max out um, Teleport even more. So then we're going to come down to Conjuration. This We're going to take Lightning Spear into invoke lightning spear this is going to be our second way guys of how to make enemies vulnerable okay this is going to make everything vulnerable for three seconds and not only that it's going to stun them for two seconds which is really good because we do rock the control glyph in our paragon boards for just so we can get some more damage then we're going to come down to mastery skills okay we're taking two points into icy veil into cold front uh i have these five points here and they're really really a flex so you can put these five points literally anywhere you want. Um, if you really want, if you don't want more uh, cold front, just to chill them, to freeze them faster, you can put points into Conjuration Mastery. That is also good. That is a really good one. You could extend Supreme Deep Freeze. Um, you could go put into Frigid Breeze for even more mana if you would really like. You do have some options here, although I think this is really good because Cold Front just makes them chill faster, which means they're going to freeze easier and we get big bonuses when they're frozen, especially in our Control Glyph. Uh, two in the points of Icy Veil just to extend our barriers. Um, we're taking one point into Inner Flames into Devouring Blaze. This is our big crit damage mod here. Um, they're going to be immobilized, which is great. And we do increase damage against burning enemies, which is awesome. We actually don't get them immobilized. Excuse me. We're going to stun them, but we will do increase uh, crit strike damage against the burning enemies, which is really good. Now, on to Blizzard, which is our main skill into Mage's Blizzard. It just increases the duration, which allows more ice spikes to actually form. Now, we're only having one point in here again because Blizzard itself is not doing the damage. Blizzard is not doing the damage whatsoever in this build. Okay? Okay. All the build damage comes from the ice spikes. So we don't need points in this. Um, after that, we're going to come down and we're going to grab um, three points into permafrost for more damage. Icy touch for more damage as well as horror frost for more damage. Then we're going to grab one point into fiery surge for mana regen. One point into soul fire only to get three points into warmth. This is just another way to keep us pretty tanky. If you feel like you're okay with your tank, 
you know you're not taking a whole lot of damage and your health is okay then you could take all five points out of this what i would recommend that you do is you max out teleport and then you max out conjuration mastery uh, if you that's if you really want to go glass cannon uh next of course we got uh deep freeze just normal deep freeze just for some added stuff i was corrected thank you guys in the chat in our previous video if we do max this out to supreme we re will we will reset all of our cooldowns so if you want to take points out and do that you could also do that from here in cold front and just max out supreme deep freeze just to reset all of your cooldowns and then we are still doing Esus ferocity as far as i know this is still bugged um, i had some people comment in our last video about how it normally applies all damage which is incorrect it only applies to fire but for the some reason this season it is still bugged um the date of this recording is 2-5 so please let me know if that has been updated i haven't seen anywhere in the notes for it but right now this applies to all of our damage which gives us a huge damage buff so that is our skill set guys now we're going to go into the gear pieces and i'm going to give you some variants here um depending on what you want to do with the build okay again everything is going to be down on the mobile legs page down in the description below so starting off first we are going to be doing andariel's visage okay i really like this increase attack speed life heal and poison resistance okay now the biggest reason why we do this is just to get the extra attack speed as well as the poisoning damage over five seconds in the area this is going to help proc our telrasha so we will have four procs of telrashas so we're going to have 28 40 56 percent increased multiplicative damage this is huge however this is an uber unique variant so in a previous video we go over some other options but if you don't have Andarials, you can do shako you can do god slayer if you want just as a base or you can do a basic helm that would be my option on your basic helm you're going to want cooldown you're going to want um max life things like that but Andarials seems to be really really good the lifesteal is actually insane next we're doing juggernauts on our armor piece if you want to go more ga uh with total armor and all dr if you want to go more glass cannon you could just do remnants this is really good to max with teleport in our gloves we're doing conceited again why we always want a barrier we deal more damage when we have a flat barrier you want intelligence instead of all stat but attack speed crit chance and then i have lucky hit to proc to gain more resource that can just be flat lucky hit which actually would be really good in our pants to bolts will we're gaining 40 percent multiplicative damage which is absolutely insane every time we become unstoppable which is teleport and flame shield we're going to gain that 50 mana which is just insane i'm so like tabalt is just nuts for this build then we're doing esus now that we can go into esus because we get the increased crit as you guys can see that my crit strike bonus is 51 percent, and then we dash and it's going to go to 74 percent crit it's absolutely insane esus is nuts if you do not have Esus or you do not like Esus, just do regular Ghost Walkers, get movement speed, mana cost, teleport, get a resistance if you need it. Otherwise, I would do ranks in either Frost Nova or Flame Shield. Those are really, really good. Next, we got Frozen Tundra here. This we don't need while Deep Freeze is active, although it does help. But this is more used for the second one where Ice Spikes have an increased explosion radius. Super strong. You want all stack, crit, uh, crit strike damage, vulnerable damage, intelligence. Super easy to get. Uh, and then next is Enigma Ancient Flame. Now, I went back and forth on this, guys. In our previous video, we did Storm Swell, as well as talking about Esus. Overall, Esus is just better. Ancient Flame with Esus Ferocity Capacitive for 50% more increased attack speed just allows us to cast more blizzards, and we just deal way more damage. The build feels much better. On here, you want Chris Strike Chance, Mana Cost, Resource Gen, as well as Cooldown. Uh, in our Amulet, this is the big one here. You want Glacial. Okay, this is where all our damage is going to come from. I almost have a max one. And our ice spikes are going to deal increased damage to frozen, which is why we have those passive points in the chill to kind of freeze them more so we deal more damage. Okay, in our rings, of course, tell Rosh is here to get the multiplicative damage. And then finally, Ring of Starless Skies. Not only is this going to really scale our crit chance and crit damage, but spending our primary resource, which is what we do with Blizzard, is going to increase our damage by 10 percent for three seconds up to 40. so this is a flat 40 percent multiplicative damage and it's a 40 percent mana cost reduction okay so this is nuts this is what allows us just basically infinitely spam blizzard with no problems whatsoever okay now if you guys don't like some of these powers if you don't like conceited you could definitely do storm storm swell 
that would be the only one I would swap out. If you want to keep Conceited, like I did in my last video, you could drop Ancient Flame and just do Storm Swell, and you're good to go. Okay, let's talk about the um, pet real quick. Same stuff from last one. We got Flash of a Gentleman with Tactical, Duration, and Initiative, and then Tempest with Resource, Efficiency, and Safeguard. Super standard on uh, Sork. Very, very strong. Now, I'm not going to go everything over everything super in-depth. I'll let you guys check out the guide down below with Mobilytics. But a lot of this has changed, okay? A lot of this has changed. Some of it is the same. But I just want to go over what we basically did. We opted for... In our previous build, we had much more defenses than we did damage. And I kind of wanted to increase that just by a little bit, but also have some good survivability. So we are rocking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight glyphs, which is kind of nuts. Okay, we're rocking eight glyphs, but we're also putting a lot of damage still and destruction with 44 there. So we are rocking control for more damage against chilled and frozen enemies, just damage overall. We're doing destruction for more crit damage. We're doing Elementalist for more damage overall. This is 15% more multiplicative. We got Flame Feeder because we're doing all of our burning damage. We got Reinforce here for more damage reduction and to boost our two radiuses here for even more damage and intelligence. We're doing Stalagmite, super strong here for our Ice Spike damage and crit chance with Ice Spikes. Territorial for more um, close range damage and damage reduction. And then last but not least is Unleashed. We added Unleashed from our previous board. After spending 50 mana, which is super easy in this build, we're going to deal 6.7 multiplicative increased damage and gain even more mana regen. So with that, we get to just do even more damage and it's going to increase some of these side ones here. Oh, that's destruction. Excuse me. So we got Elementalist there and then we have Unleashed here, which is going to make these two glyphs be even stronger. So... We're rocking that and then we're doing ice fall for more damage and we're also doing frigid fate for more damage i really need to get my vulnerability damage up because we can get another 12 percent here multiplicative with a um you deal bonus damage to vulnerable enemies equal to the total amount of bonus damage with cold so i need to get that up i'm trying to do that in the board somehow but i'm struggling i think i would have to drop our glyph up here to do it um, and just swap out one, but I don't know where I'm going to get the extra cold damage. So I'll have to figure that out if I want to kind of max that. But we could probably also max that by putting something in the gear piece here. Like instead of lucky hit, you could put in uh, cold damage. Something like that would be really good. Uh, but that is the Paragon board, guys. So how this build works, just to kind of go over things really quickly, is you're just basically going to spam everything. You're spamming your two shields. Um, Flame shield is your oh crap handle. Same thing with your ultimate. But you want to spam Lightning Spear all the time and you just spam Blizzard. So this is kind of how the build looks. You just make everything go crazy. And we're doing like 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 million damage on all of these spikes. And this build just absolutely, it just slaps. Now let's go through and just do a T100 just so people can see. Because I know everybody really likes to see... Uh, you know, the T100s, because we talked about this in stream, and, you know, apparently people still struggle. I get this all the time in comments, and I don't know why this is, like, a a thing in the Diablo community, is that, like, if you don't see the build destroy Lilith, destroy Durial, or destroy T100s, then the build isn't valid, which I think is just such a weird concept, guys. It's like, come on, man. Builds are, builds are really good. A lot of builds can pretty much do all your content, and you have nothing to worry about. But uh, yeah, let's just go through this. So the play style is going to be exactly the same. You're basically just going to be speed farming through these. You're just going to proc everything and just move. You're not going to pick up any items. I know somebody said that in my last video. Like, well, what about all the items? Yeah, well, we're just kind of moving through this. No problem. The reason for that is, is because it takes a second for the ice spikes to actually hit. So when you're spamming them, you just kind of let them hit. And you just roll, right? Oh, that's a big circle. We got to go the other way. You just kind of blast, man. It's super easy to do. Because the spikes take a second before they explode. So you just kind of just move through this really, really fast. I didn't even mean to grab that many, but... You just kind of roll. You just go. Lightning Spear is super strong in this build. We, swap we opted out of... Uh frozen nova or frost nova because we can still make enemies 
pretty frozen. Like, you can see that a lot of enemies are just super frozen here. And it's just really, really easy. Like, they all just, they all just die. Right? It's, it's no problem. Like, they just, you don't even need Frost, Frost Nova at all. You freeze them so easy, it just doesn't even matter. But the build is so good. The only thing is, is that, like, if you want to run a max disobedience, you probably could and still hit your armor cap. Um, just so you could dash maybe a little bit more. But, again, the build is just so good. You just move through. And you can easily just destroy T100s. You, you just hit everything. Oh, we got a bunch of enemies. Let's just hit our, our ultimate. And then we get out. The build is just so smooth. And is just so strong. I mean, and even if you stun everything, like, I do miss Ghost Walkers for just the, just to be able to move through, like, Wallers and stuff, because Wallers are always just super annoying, but yeah, you just move through. Also, guys, we got a, a tier list coming out for the vaults. Let me just tell you that Cinders is the best, especially for the, um, not only the layout, but the, uh, this boss room. Because Blizzard just, like, annihilates the boss room. It just annihilates the boss room. It's super easy. The biggest thing you have to avoid is all the double expl death explosions, which, again, come on. Devs at Blizzard. Get that crap out of here. The extra deaths are just annoying. They're just annoying. Look at that. All the explosions. It's so silly. But that's it. You just blast right through it, guys. It's so easy. The build just the build is just so strong. It plays so smooth. And it's just so satisfying to have Blizzard just kind of be back on top to a degree, you know? It's just such an easy build to play. But yeah, guys, that is our Blizzard build. Ultra Uber Unique Frieza Final Form 100% build guide. Okay? 100% build guide. This is an absolute blast of a build. Again, you have a lot of variety here. Also, too, with Juggernauts, our armor is going to be capped. You can see it in here. Our armor is capped as well as all of our res. So if you have any issues on your resistances, then you're going to be fine. You can see we're over 13.3. We're capped. Starless Skies really gives us an extra 24% total all res, which just makes this super easy to cap. So, yeah, guys, that is the build. Again, this is the final update for Blizzard. This is what I'll be playing for the rest of the season. I will have an updated Meteor Guide coming to you very, very shortly. Okay? This will be coming up right after this build, Blizzard build. But thank you guys so much for all the support. Like, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the brand new variant. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And as always, stay gaming. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.